In the previous video, we talked about the fundamentals of research along with its objective and its importance. We have also touched briefly about the objective and purpose of research. I am carrying this particular component little forward in this video where we will discuss the objective and purpose of research in terms of method and outcome. Method is applied to achieve certain kind of outcome and this outcome is hypothetically known to the researcher and therefore, the choice of method is decided by the researcher based on the requirement. Friends, there is an example, there could be a property owner who may own a particular property for different objectives. The objective could be he wants that property for the purpose of his own personal use. He may like to own that property to let it out for renting purpose or for that matter the same property can also be bought for the purpose of investment. So, here you have seen that one property purchase can result into three distinct objectives. Same is true about your research. Research exercise could accomplish more than one objectives. However, the objectives are very sacrosanct in this process as they would determine the pathways of research protocols. They would decide the steps that you would be taken for collecting the data. They would also decide the type of techniques that you would use for the purpose of generating the required amount of data. With this discussion, we can move on to next phase of this talk, which is about the types of research. Friends, in various textbooks, you will find the typology of research is variously classified as this module or this talk is mainly focusing on legal research. Therefore, we would be talking about the types of research which is popular in legal research method domain. I am here to discuss as many as eight different types of research models and these research models would not only provide you an insight about the objective for which the research is being carried out, they would also tell you the type of approach and the type of structure or research design that could be suitable to this type of research method. In this discussion, the first type of research is called evolutive research, which is based on evolution. We know Darwin who has given this terminology. This is originative or originating fundamental research. Now, fundamental research is true to all the disciplines irrespective of their orientation and the idea of Evolutive research is to, is to trace the origin of a subject, an incident, a theory, a doctrine or anything. These research are more and more popular in pure science when they do the inventions or create a new utility or for that matter in theoretical research also when they give 
origin to a new theory or a new understanding about a phenomena. So, this is called evolutive research. So, viewers, I have just mentioned about evolutive research. Let me tell you, though I have used this word, please be also aware that this research is also known as inventive research. So, if you come across the term inventive, you can easily relate to the term that I have used in my lecture that is evolutive. Now, I move on to the second category of research which is called explanatory research. As the, the term suggests that this type of research is about the ideas which are already in existence. However, your research tries to explore them in a new context. This is very popular kind of research where research methodology can explore lesser known ideas, facts, subjects, incidences, explanation about a given phenomena. Now, there is a third type of research which is called explanatory research. Explanatory research means you are trying to explain an idea, a doctrine, a theory, a phenomena in a new perspective. And this explanation means you are trying to be contextual with respect to a particular subject and you are explaining that particular issue or idea into various context and thereby you are generating a cross fertilization of several ideas which become useful. I now introduce you to a next type of research that is called diagnostic research. In diagnostic research, the assumption is there is a problem which is already in existence. However, the causes of this problem are not known. And the function of this kind of research is to explore those causes which are responsible for the genesis of this problem. Friends, at times we know that a particular problem is caused by a set of variables. However, those variables are not confirmed or we do not know them for sure and therefore, it gives rise to the requirement of a research. Such type of research is quite popular in the fields like medicine or for that matter in the fields of uh, psychology, psychiatry, social work, where a problem like ailment or a problem like deviance or any such problem is required to be diagnosed by the people who are responsible for the interventions to them. And therefore, they need to understand the various causes responsible for them. And this model of research can give, uh, confirm a lot of ideas which can be useful for the purpose of diagnosis. And the last part or the last type of research that I intend to discuss in this video is the remedial. Remedial research is about suggesting the correctives in order to intervene a situation which is already in existence. This is a very applied kind of research where the researchers are expected to offer those suggestions which could result into the curtailment of that problem. So, for instance, if an area is fraught with the incidence of motor bike thefts and the state or the police department wants the researcher to suggest those measures which could reduce the incidence of uh, uh, motor bike thefts in the community. And if the researcher you know suggests based on his study that these are the factors which can be responsible for the incidence of theft and what are the correctives which can be undertaken to reduce the problem. Now, this type of research is called remedial research. So, friends in this video we have seen 
the objective, purpose and also the different types of research along with their approaches. And in the next video, I would be talking about the remaining types of research and I would also look at the, the legal research more specifically. There I would try to classify the legal research and its various forms and functions.